Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. My name is Carlos. Thank you for joining me again. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing a workout session from yesterday. We're trained uh, calves, back, triceps, and shoulders. So uh, as you guys have been following me have seen I'm trying to build up PRs and big weights. Not every single session can can uh, can do that. I can't do that on every single session. There is a fatigue issue going on where there's just a, some days it's impossible. I'll, I'll have programmed those movements for the day. So on Saturday, what is it? Yeah, so Saturday, um, definitely the deadlift was included. Uh, the, we, the idea was to sandwich it between the warm-up, one isolation movement, and get into the heavy lift. Now, I noticed from the very start that I didn't have the, the, uh, the, the, the mind wasn't there. I said, well, this, I don't know about doing four plates today. So, like, uh, you know, when you go in with that attitude to the gym, and it's not really an attitude. I was, I was feeling a bit lethargic, not, not just that, but, you know, fatigued. I'm feeling fatigued. I said, well, am I, am I going to be able to do this? And I'm sure, yeah, you know, warm up and you'll work into it. And, you know, it was, it's programmed. I have this week uh, this progression to do. And, uh, you know, come hell or high water, I'm going to do it. Well, no. No, because that's a recipe for disaster. If, if your mind is not really in the moment, if you're not, if you don't have that adrenaline going, and that just overwhelming strength, uh, you feel fresh, you feel strong, those heavy weights can hurt you. And, you know, I met up with a friend that day at the gym, said, uh, Victor, and I said, uh, you know, he's kind of hobbling around, kind of grabbing his, his lower back, lower oblique. He says, Vic, well, you know, what happened? I said, well, uh, I hurt my back doing squats the other day. I said, well, what was the deal? Yeah, you know, I went up to my max weight, but I wasn't really into it. I wasn't, I wasn't feeling strong that day. I said, Victor, the problem is when you get up to a certain class of lifting, it's not about the muscle so much. It's more about your central nervous system. It's more about how excited, willing, and able you are to do that lift. It's, it's, it's not like, okay, we're going to warm up the muscle, and now we can do the exercise. No, it doesn't work like that. Not when you get up to three, four, five hundred 500 pounds. It's, it's all in the, in the central nervous system. If that oomph is not there, you're fucking staying away from those heavy lifts because you're going to hurt yourself. That's how I've hurt myself in the back. I've never really, in the past, I've never seriously hurt myself. I have never been injured to the point where I couldn't go and work out again. But, you know, I've had, like, minor tears. I've had bruises. And um, I guess nothing beyond that. You know, I haven't had any real major setbacks, thank God. But, you know, the fear of God is there. You know, I mean, you go in and you're not prepared. You're not mentally psyched out to do a heavy squat. I mean, obviously you work up into it and you'll notice, like, you know, say your max squat is uh, 450 or 500 pounds. Or if you get, you know, you guys are just starting to maybe it's your max weight is 250 or 300. You'll notice with half that weight if you have it in you. Now, that can't be an excuse for being lazy. You know, I've, you know, I definitely am, uh, you know, I can be lazy, you know, as we get older, you know, I'm 57, I, I, I love to just hang out on a hammock and just kind of relax, but I, that's, that's the recipe for death right there. You can't let yourself get lazy, and I don't let myself get lazy at the gym. I definitely know when it's, it's a uh, psychological, like, uh, thing that I should just warm up a little bit more and get into it. Or if definitely the energy is not there. Okay, so the energy was not there for that big lift. It was programmed, so I, no, fuck it. So we're not doing that particular lift. And I just intensified the the other workout. So I wouldn't call it a light pump session. I know I've been kind of derogatory towards the, the gym rat, gym bro, you know, weeder type routines where you go and do, you know, 15, 12, 12, 10. It's so old school and it's so, like, I, I really dislike that as a method of training because I felt it robbed me of years of progress. It, like, literally just grabbed me by my pocket and took my cash out. It's like, a, you know, I was assaulted in my good faith by these bullshit pump routines that will never get anybody strong. And if they got strong, it was in spite of it. Oh, yeah, I got really strong doing 15 reps. 
I always heard that, yeah. And you just graduate your weight. Now they're doing 300 pounds because they used to do 15 reps with like one plate. And I said, these liars, fucking liars, man. It's just not the way. And it'll never work for me. So getting back to the thing, I always had a derogatory thing towards these uh, gym bro type of workouts. You know, it's either powerlifting, you get into the heavy weight, and then you go into your hypertrophy and really nail it. So, but is it not a productive workout? Well, let me say this. If your basic, you know, general uh, type of training is heavy weights, those uh, intensified, focused hypertrophy sessions can do nothing but good. It's really great to mix it in. And I think that's the way they actually work. Actually, well, they've been working for me. And quick update: I am up to two hundred and one pounds today. I'm feeling like on top of the world after being stuck. Well, I got down to one eighty two when I started this this bulk journey. You know, I got as lean as I could. I have a thumbnail up there somewhere when I was at one eighty two. I was looking pretty damn skinny in my eyes. You know, like no fat on the lower back or anything like that. I was looking pretty lanky and thin. I said, I got to bulk up. Bodybuilders do not weigh 180 pounds. They weigh 280 pounds. So I said, you know, if I don't do this now, I'll never do it. <clears throat> so the mission is to gain 60 pounds. Go up to 240 pounds of, of solid, you know, like muscle. You know, not get fat, train. So today we're up 19 pounds up to 201 from 182 to 201 i couldn't be more excited so these these uh lighter sessions that are interluded with the heavy heavy pr lifts are not are not setting me back they're definitely working so okay let's go over it bombing the calves what is it that we're doing for calves we're doing a lot of work in a short amount of time. No more than 10 minutes, just one exercise. Usually it's a dumbbell uh, ray, calf raise. And what I try to do is do 50 reps, take a 30 second rest and do another 50 reps and just try to do as many reps as possible for five or six sets with 30 second rest. Now I've been preaching about longer rest periods between sets because that's what you do with power. If you're doing heavy squats, you're doing heavy bench presses, you should be resting between three and five minutes, depending on your, you know, your uh, physical condition. Uh, I don't believe that one minute allows you to recuperate to go into a very deep and heavy set on any of these compound movements. But when you're doing hypertrophy work, a lot of work concentrated in a short amount of time is what's needed. So did almost 200 reps in less than eight minutes, I think, for the calves. Got them completely, insanely pumped. Although they're, you know, you're not gonna see them like big. <laughs> they're just starting to get an outline in the little calf. You know, I don't wanna show them yet. <clears throat> but it takes a long time for me to build up my calves. I can't neglect them. So after the calf movements, go down to the back. The, one, the hammer row machine where you're chest supported and you pull. What an interesting machine that is. It hits the angle. It hits my upper back. It hits my lower lat. It hits everything just so. So I've been working that for the last several weeks, uh, doing a nice progression on that machine. Started out with 85s, going up every, you know, 40 pounds until I reach full stack. Today I started at 130 pounds, got up to 200 pounds, and then went down in weight and did one arm. Isolateral movements on that hammer machine. It was great. Then from there... Went to the low row cable, one of the best exercises there is. And did the same thing there. Started high. I started with 125 pounds with one arm. With one arm. And it's doable. I know I can go up really heavy with that. But we're taking it like every week of progression. So started out with, you know, 8, 10 reps on each side. And lower it to uh, 95 pounds. And then another, you know, 15 reps. And then so on. Went down to 77 pounds. Pretty lightweight and repped out there, and then went back up with weight, I think it was very heavy, 145 pounds, and did it with both arms. So that was it for back, I said, well, there goes my deadlift, I'm not doing a uh, PR video today, where I can show me, you know, doing four plates, uh, I think the goal was to do eight reps, so I couldn't even pull one off the floor, not, not, not in the state of mind that I was on Saturday, but I for sure intensified those rowing movements, and went to the, um, to the uh, triceps 
And uh, I saw Mack Truck on a video the other do day doing a 100 rep challenge for his triceps. And I figured, well, let's give it a kind of a, you know, change it up a little bit. Let's pump those triceps because these guys have monster arms. They're not doing like monster weights. Oh, yeah, I can curl 100 pounds. No, I see them pumping. I see them pump, 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 pump. Of course, you can't, you know, exclude the heavy work, but it's basically pump. So I did the rope for 30 reps here and then over the head 30 reps and then bumped up the weight and did another 20, another 10. And then from there, uh, went to dumbbell side laterals. Excellent movement. My shoulders have been, you know, a lot of guys have shoulder issues and stuff, but and, and tend to shy away from the shoulder raise. That being said, if you hit the angle just right, there's no impingement, there's no pain or anything like that on the shoulder. So try to find the angle where your, your hand is, is working the muscle exactly without putting any impingement on the on the uh, on the joint. And that's exactly what I did. So I did two sets of those, 25 reps, kind of high high reps. Uh, some of these movements they they merit like high reps. If you're not going to go with you know all out weight, <clears throat> hey, your your muscle isn't counting. All it knows is fatigue, and it's and it'll reach a limit. And that limit is not gen It doesn't have to be like eight or ten. You know, something you just keep on going. Of course, it's not going to be 100 reps, but, you know, 25. Buffed the weight up and did another, you know, 20, 15 reps. And then from there, <clears throat> triceps Z-bar. Now the, or flat bar. I did flat bar. And what I try to do with the triceps on that exercise, I believe that's probably the best exercise for triceps, is uh, to do a hybrid between a pullover, like a back pullover, and the extension. And I've heard so many people, oh, you, you know, you're not strict. All you need, you know, you just have to maintain elbow flexion and that's it. Well, that's not, uh, that's uh, being ignorant of anatomy because the tricep actually has an insertion in the back, in the lat. And so it's benefited by moving the shoulder. You have to flex the shoulder. And, and this is why the triceps gets worked when you do heavy rowing movements also. Depends on the person. Some people, their angles, their, their ratios are, are more um, favorable for certain other accessory muscles to be involved in the major exercises. Like Ronnie Coleman's biceps was obviously helped out a lot by his sloppy rowing technique. So sloppy rowing will get you humongous arms because he was, you know, like the T-bars and the, and the barbell row. He's using huge weights, and you can see in the videos that his biceps was taking up a lot of that effort. So for me... The pullover is one of the best exercises for grabbing the mass of the triceps and, of course, extending and, and crunching. Now, I was starting the exercise with the elbows flared out, and my trainer came up and said, try to do that as strictly as, you know, close as you can. I said, that's so old school. That's how everybody, you know, was taught in the beginning. It kind of we drift away. Well, I did it, uh, maintaining the elbows super close. It didn't really take away from the performance. I was able to do the same amount of weight. It's not my max weight, but it's enough to work. 90 pounds, I think it was. I've gone up to 135. I do videos with 135, but we're not hung up with the weight right now. Okay, so 90 pounds, elbows super strict, and boy, did I get a fierce pump from that. And then from there, finished off with one arm, one arm ISO, you know, the dumbbells, dumbbells, just working the dumbbells. And that was it. That was it for the session. The only other remarkable thing about the set, I mean, every exercise, I took it to the limit, um, you know, in spite of not doing these heavy powerlifting moves, it was a very productive workout. Uh, the other thing of note is the warm-ups for these sessions is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing more sprinting now, even if it's on the bicycle, on the elliptical, or on the treadmill, I try to include one or two sprints in the warm-up. Yeah, so you shouldn't do high intensity cardio before your session. And that's generally true, but I don't think like one or two sprints in a total of 12 to 15 minutes is going to detract from your from your efforts from lifting weights. And for me, it's been doing a lot of good. Because as you've seen in some of the videos, like the squats, I need to take the heavy squat into deeper reps, which means eight, ten, and beyond. That takes a bit of high intensity cardio. And so can't completely neglect the cardio. 
I will be, as, as I'm increasing in weight and the body weight is going up more easily, I will be including more cardio because I can be more generous with my energy expenditure as long as I see the log and everything is going up. I'll include more cardio, you know, but it's not like low intensity cardio where I'm just burning calories. That's not the idea. I am against calling it cardio <clears throat> because I don't, yeah, your, your heart is worked. But what we're trying to do is work the lung. So it's pulmonary. Try to increase your VO2, your capacity to ingest and process oxygen and get oxygen into the muscles. That's the primary focus of your cardio work. That's why I say calling it cardio is backwards. It's ass backwards. It's uh, maliciously intent. It's it's intended to to to. Um, <clears throat> It's intended to get you to not focus on what you should be focusing on. So you go and do your cardio, you're thinking about cardio, and it's wrong. You should be thinking about your lung, your pulmonary, your oxygen, your breathing. That's the focus. That is what you should be thinking about. Some people, you know, in spite of calling it cardio, will know instinctively it's your breathing. But some people won't. Many people think it's just getting your heart rate up, and it couldn't be further from the truth. You have to focus on your breathing, guys. It's your breathing that'll take you through those hard sets. It's your breathing that will enable you to perform your maximal weights with efficiency. You have to breathe and brace, first of all. So breathing is front and center on that. But also, how do you breathe and brace for your 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th rep when you got four, 400 plus pounds on your back or you're lifting from the floor? Yeah, you have to practice. You have to practice and give due diligence to your breathing. So, okay. So to recap, it was a non-super heavyweight session with, uh, you know, plenty of reps, a lot of directed, you know, technique for the pump, the contraction, maximum squeeze. And, uh, you know, I was, I was very fatigued yesterday. My rest day yesterday was, you know, I, I was just very 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 tired so it does work not every single ex you know day has to be a pr day hopefully today we're going into um to do some ab work and some accessories like i'm just priming myself for my wednesday squat video and, and session which i shouldn't really build up too much because when the time comes i'll be intimidated as fuck to be able to perform so i don't like to build myself up during the week thinking about the workout but i do but i still do so today i don't have anything super heavy programmed like if i feel like it i may do the deadlifts just out of the blue just just the deadlifts so you know abs some more calves i'll do some a little bit of bicep work. When I say a little bit, it's not like so much volume, but like I'll train it really hard. Some forearms, some cardio, and, you know, God willing, if the energy is there, I'll do the deadlift video. If not, I won't. I'll wait until next week. It's like once a month I'll do those PRs. Anyways, guys, thanks for, you know, putting up with me, my, my rambling rants, and uh, I sure hope that there is some valuable lesson or knowledge to be gleaned from these chats. Um, like, you know, I'm on this journey, I'm fully committed, I'm doing this for the long haul. My goal is to get big, massive, and ripped uh, into my 60s and 70s and maintain perfect health doing it. You know, it's a tall order. I believe it can be done. I'm doing it now. And so just taking it, you know, step by step. I don't like that one day at a time thing. I think it's bullshit. Sometimes you have to think long term. Like, you know, I have to think like this year, next year, next year. And, you know, obviously we do daily activities and we got to be in the daily grind. Anyways, guys, God bless you all and have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time.